everybody. So today I'm going to teach you guys how to make my fantasy fudge. Um, I get a lot of requests for my fudge every year and this is my weekend to do my cookie baking and candy making that I ship to my family and just give to my neighbors and different people and people really love my fudge so I thought I would teach you guys how to make it yourself. It's, it's time consuming and hard work so you might not want to do that but if you do I thought I'd show you how to do it. So come on in my kitchen. Okay, first of all, this process goes slow and then fast. So you have to be ready when everything gets going to put everything in the pan. So I always lay everything out ahead of time that I'm going to need and get it ready for when the it starts boiling. So first of all, you're going to need a 11 by 8 pan. I use an 11 by 8 because it makes the fudge a little bit thicker than if you use a 13 by 9, then you're going to have a thinner fudge. You line it with aluminum foil so that when the fudge gets hard, you just pull this right out of there, fold the foil off of it, and then you can cut your fudge up. It works out really great and then you don't even have to clean the pan afterwards unless you spill on it. Okay, so these are all the ingredients laid out. We are going to need three cups of sugar. Yes, three cups of sugar, people. <laughs> Goes into my fudge. So if you've ever eaten my fudge, you're probably looking in horror right now that you ate that much sugar, but that's why it tastes so good. You are going to need three-fourths cup of butter. They say margarine, but I don't use margarine. I use real butter. So that's a stick and a half of butter. Okay. Then you're gonna need one small can or two third cups evaporated milk. Um, again, I get it at all these, not condensed milk. You can't use condensed milk, it's evaporated milk only. Then you're gonna need a bag of semi-sweet chocolate morsels. Semi-sweet, not, not uh, milk chocolate. Milk chocolate would be too sweet. Just the whole bag. So I always cut it open before I start so that I can have everything ready, like I said. Then you're gonna need a jar of marshmallow cream, whatever brand you wanna use. I, I have never noticed a difference in the brand. And then you're gonna need a teaspoon of vanilla. So I have my teaspoon ready with my vanilla. I usually even take the lid off because this is at the end when it goes really fast, so, so I can be ready. And then one cup of chopped nuts. These are walnuts. I always put walnuts in mine, but you can use whatever nut you want, um, pecans or anything like that. All right, you ready to get started? Okay, so first of all, the first thing that you put in the pan is the butter. And you wanna turn your, your heat on to, oh, I almost forgot. One thing that I don't use a candy thermometer, a lot of people do. My mama taught me how to do it without a candy thermometer because we didn't have one. So I'll teach you at the end, what you're gonna need is some cold water and a see-through glass cup. And I'll teach you at the end what we do with that. So you put your butter in the pan, turn it on to uh, medium high heat. So on my electric range, it'll be number six. You know what yours is, whatever stove you're using, whether it be electric or gas. So then you open your, your milk and you pour out two thirds of a cup. Perfect. Pour that in there. And then you put your three cups of sugar right in there. One. Two. Three. All right, you put that to the side. And then you let this melt down. Can you see real good in there? You just let the butter melt down and the sugar and the milk all together. This is the part that takes so long. My mama was selling fudge door to door for the church when she went into labor with me with her sister Mary and she didn't want to tell anybody that she was in labor because 
one, she wanted to get the fudge sold that they had made, and two, um, she didn't want to go to the hospital and wait a long time. So finally, she decided to tell my Aunt Mary that she was in labor, and my Aunt Mary freaked out, and if you know my Aunt Mary, you'll know she freaked out. And my mom proceeded to go home, take a shower, and get herself all ready to go to the hospital and have me. And sure enough, she went to the hospital and she wasn't in labor very long and she had me. So I'm a fudge baby by, by heart. So you can see the butter's melting and you can see the sugar and milk mixture is making like a thick, creamy consistency. So I'm gonna let this butter melt down a little bit more and then I'm gonna show y'all what it starts to look like just before it boils. Okay, so we're, we've been stirring for about three or four minutes here, and as you can see, the butter hasn't even melted yet. This is the longest part of the process. So be ready to stand here a while. You have to constantly stir it or your milk will scorch. So you just do S's all through it, swirl it around. And we gotta wait for it to come to a rolling boil and then you wanna wait about four to five minutes during the boil before you, you it's ready. But I'll, I'll show you that when it comes to it. So now it's just all combining and you just gotta wait until you start seeing it bubble a little bit, which is, is quite a while. It takes a while, but you gotta continue to stir it. As you can see, there's some bubbles starting to form. So that means it's gonna start bo uh, boiling here in a little bit, but you gotta wait and let it come to a full rolling boil. So these bubbles are gonna be all over the place. So I'll show you what it looks like when it comes to a full rolling boil. And then you're gonna time it out about four minutes. Right, yeah, that's a full rolling boil. So that's what it looks like, where all the bubbles are coming and popping and it's all throughout the whole pan. So now we're gonna time it out about four minutes, maybe four, four and a half and see what it looks like. I look like Rosie the Riveter with my thing on my head like that. All right, looking good. Just keep stirring it, make sure you're stirring because your milk will scorch and it will change the flavor of the fudge. Okay, what you wanna do at this stage is pour some cold water, so I got mine out of the fridge, um, into a glass that you can see through. And then what my mama always taught me was to dribble a little bit of the contents in there and if you can touch it with your finger and it balls up see how it's balling up down there then it's ready so you take it off your heat so you're going to move it over to the next burner this is when it goes fast guys so you dump in your chocolate morsels stir that around and you put in your marshmallow fudge i mean marshmallow fluff Marshmallow fudge. I always have a spatula inside the container ready so I can do this quickly. You have to go pretty fast. And then you want to stir it up. More stirring. Work them muscles. Really get all that worked in there. As you can see, the chocolate chips are already melted. It doesn't take much in that hot liquid to melt all that. Oh, it smells so good. I wish we had Smell-O-Vision. It's coming together real good. You wanna make sure you work around all them corners and get all them chocolate chips mixed in so you don't have a big glob of dark chocolate in there. You want to get it all mixed around. You want to put in your teaspoon of vanilla extract. See why I get everything ready ahead of time? It's much easier to work it in. And then your cup of nuts. See it's already starting to get more stiff. Let's 
spread it out real good so you have nice even pieces Then you wanna let it set up for an hour or two. Uh, don't put it in the fridge. Um, just let it set out on the counter and get um, solid. And then, like I said, you just pick it up out of the aluminum foil, take that off and cut it out. So anyways, I wanted to show y'all the finished product of my fudge when it's done. And I took it out of the pan. Here it is. And it just, you just peel away the aluminum foil here. It comes right out. You don't need to grease it or anything. And then you just take it and you just cut it in however big pieces you want. But if you've had my fudge before, you know how rich it is. So I wouldn't cut too, too big of pieces, but that's, that's the finished product. We all know how good it is. I'll take a little piece off the end. As Mr. Food from the old days would say, ooh, it's so good. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy baking. Bye.